the Metropolitan Line from the City of London passes through Metroland, an expression coined by the Met's marketing department in 1915 and made popular by Sir John Betjeman in his poems where he reminisces about the lure of Metroland. Today, services terminate at Amersham in Buckinghamshire, but they used to penetrate further into the Chilterns and beyond to Verney Junction, 50 miles from Baker Street. At the moment, the line beyond Amersham is operated by Chiltern Railways, terminating at Aylesbury. It could be reinstated back to Verney Junction when the line between Bicester and Bletchley, known as the Varsity Line and closed in 1967, which went from Oxford to Cambridge, is brought back into public service. Metroland coincided with the spread of urban development towards Rickmansworth and Watford, and, like the North Downs south of London, the Chilterns provided an effective physical barrier. For residents and visitors, the Chilterns are an essential oasis of peace and quiet, facing on its northwestern flank the Vale of Aylesbury and the faraway Midlands counties. I took the Metropolitan Line to Amersham on the hill. The station is half a mile from the delightful old town which nestles in the valley. Its main street boasts many fine buildings of Georgian brick and a town hall dating from 1682. I continued my journey by train to Wendover and walked the Ridgeway National Trail to the summit of Coombe Hill, which overlooks Chequers. Now this is the official country residence of the Prime Minister, where important decisions are sometimes made that affect the whole country. You can only visit by invitation, which is unlikely. Just in case you think I am trespassing, this shot is taken from the Ridgeway, which at other times can be the haunt of press photographers with very long lenses. At Goring, the River Thames, on its journey to London, breaks through the chalk hills, creating a gap separating the Chilterns from the Berkshire Downs. From Wallingford, the Thames snakes its way to Maidenhead, now the Chilterns' southern boundary. Isabard Kingdom Brunel's Great Western Railway makes great use of the Goring Gap, producing a convenient direct link from London Paddington to Bristol Temple Meads. Today, this route carries high-speed trains between both cities and into South Wales. Beyond Reading, the Thames flows sedately past Henley and Marlow. This serene corner was immortalised by Kenneth Graham in his children's book The Wind in the Willows and the painter Sir Stanley Spencer whose biblical scenes are set in Cookham, which he called his Village in Heaven. Clifton is where the 1961 Profumo scandal took place that nearly brought down the Macmillan government. Down by the river is Spring Cottage, where apparently it all started, now a holiday let, so close the curtains it is very much photographed. Expect to pay a four-figure sum, but to greet your arrival is a hamper that includes champagne, red and white wines, and six beers. Secrets of a different nature were carried out at Huendon Manor, north of High Wycombe, the home of Disraeli. 
It was requisitioned during the Second World War in 1941 by the Air Ministry for map making by updating old German road maps to assist covert bombing raids. The National Trust acquired Huenden in 1947. It was not possible to present the house as it would have been in Disraeli's time as many items have been dispersed. Its atmosphere as a country retreat from his life as a politician has been retained. He was also a writer, completing twelve novels and other shorter works and was a close friend of Queen Victoria. He died in 1881 and chose to be buried at Huendon and not Westminster Abbey, a request supported by Queen Victoria. The Chilterns has many grand houses, and although not in the area of outstanding natural beauty, Waddeston, just beyond Aylesbury, is one of the finest in the country. Nevertheless, by alighting at Chalfont and Latimer on the Metropolitan Line for a walk in the Chess Valley, Jenny's Manor is not far, and Latimer Village is a delight in itself. Chenies is one of our finest Tudor houses, previously known as Chenies Palace, that played host to Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. It may look familiar, as it is the perfect location for period TV dramas. The chimneys, incidentally, are amazing. Dedicated walkers to the Chilterns head for the high hills. Coombe Hill at 852 feet is one of the highest points on a ridge that continues to Dunstable Downs. The Ridgeway Trail keeps mostly to high ground and at Dunstable Downs your visit may be accompanied by gliders swooping and hovering silently on air currents generated by the hills. Here we can share in the glorious prospect by looking out over the Vale of Aylesbury and into a blue haze concealing the Midlands counties. My favourite Chiltern viewpoint is a few miles back towards Tring. It has a station on the London Midland Line, but instead of heading into town, walk the other way, on the Ridgeway Trail to Oldbury, one of those locations featured in a couple of television Midsummer Murders episodes. But I think we are okay. If shock waves are being sent down your spine, exit by taking a path from the other side of the village that gently ascends the downs to Ivinghoe Beacon. Its ridge projects like a slender finger into the vale, offering a viewpoint that I regard as the finest in the Chilterns. The town far away in the valley is Leighton Buzzard, but cast your eye instead along that tempting spur on your right, and you might make out a chalk lion carved into the downs. That denotes the location of Whipsnade Zoo. This landscape is part of the National Trust Ash Ridge Estate, and earlier you would have passed the monument to the third Duke of Bridgewater, who lived at nearby Ash Ridge House. 
Normally, it is not open for general viewing, except on certain days, so consult website. I was fortunate, and should your wandering steps head in this direction at the right moment, don't miss the opportunity.